Hey guys, you're listening to Baha, and we're going to do something a bit different today. We're going to be looking at um, a different examples of year two content. That's right. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at different parts of the map. Um, has most of it been confirmed as being some of the year two, uh, well, 1.6 content. What we're looking at is purely the, the year two content. Um, as been previously said on the live stream state of the games, there is no plans for uh, a year two yet. Which for me sounds absolutely ridiculous. Um, I, I mean, the biggest selling game of 2016, and the guys that went, Oh, we don't really know what we're going to do for year two. Yeah, oh, good job. Just go ahead and let's have a look at what we're going to be looking at anyway. Um, I was looking at some of the map, and we're going to be looking at different parts of the map in, in sort of detail. Okay. So, first up here is Interpreted. Is it Interpret? And and Jepard, right, right, it's a boat, it's a boat, you can see it on your map, on your your screen. So let's look at Jepard, right, so remember all back in the day is that um, people had essentially glitched themselves out of the map, okay, um, this this happened quite often, Massive eventually patched it, right. The one of the key differences in other, on the other locations um, compared to this one is that this area is essentially complete. Right, um, I'm still to this day not entirely sure why they didn't release it um, at any point in the year one content, but this is clearly an opportunity for year two content. So when they tell us there's no plans for year two, they're talking out their butt cheeks because they already have a whole side of the map not touched yet. Right, so it sounds kind of insane. Right, uh, and what we're going to be basing it on is we're basing it on what we've seen so far and what we've seen in the future and what we're going to be seeing um, right now, essentially in 1.6. Okay, and part of that is that when you watch the, the clips of glitching at the map, you can find them everywhere. Is that people had actually walked through that part and had then gone off and looked at the whole side of the map. This whole left hand side of the map is essentially done complete all they got in a couple of features here and there so that's 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 kind of what we can expect essentially so my th theory is that this will definitely show up in year two if they don't they've essentially spent money on building a section a quarter of them a, a big chunk of the map essentially and they're not going to use it i mean that's like me saying i'm going to make a product and i'm not going to sell it on my, any any store i mean it's the same thing so, as you can see, that is definitely going to be a part of it. It's definitely going to be there. If you've seen the glitching videos, if you haven't, go take a look at them. Um, it's fascinating, really. I've, I've watched it all myself. I've done a bit of it myself uh, back in the day, uh, and I loved it. It was a, it's a really good size of the map. Um, whether that will be an incursion, maybe even a, possibly a raid type style gameplay, I'm not entirely sure yet how they could do that. Uh, but as we'll move on through the, the sort of clips here, you'll kind of see that I do kind of touch on it a little bit more on other things and examples of what we've seen so far in the gaming. But this is, as far as I'm aware, is all done. It just needs to add the kind of finishing touches, that kind of thing, like boxes and whatnot. So that, for one, is your sort of main top one for the year two content. That's, that's definitely going to have to happen. Okay. So, have we look at it in your own map? Uh, it is there. It does say the name on it. Clinton Park's there as well. I mean, it's it's done. It's completed. It's not like any of the rest of the maps we'll kind of touch on in a wee second, okay? You all have to excuse me. I do have a cold, uh, and this is not really usually what I, I tend to, to talk about. I do talk about theory stuff. Um, I've done some theory stuff over the way as well here. Uh, different... Um, places like Arrow and stuff like that, but completely aware of this this time. So, <coughs> pardon me. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this picture here. This picture is the kind of main key of why the theory is the theory itself. Okay. As you may know, this is 1.6 is going to be dropped fairly soon, uh, probably about the 28th of February. Uh, it'll be a Tuesday, like every other patch so far. Now, you can clearly see in this video, right, uh, on this clip, that you can see that the buildings are rendered slightly. Right, and that means that they they have a sort of structured point. They have structured sort of buildings in that area. Also, if you watch the glitch video, the guys do come across that kind of area. They do come across it, and you can see buildings and there's floors, blah blah blah. Right. As the developers have said, is that 1.6 obviously had uh, the the DZ seven, eight, and nine, 
and they had a lot more fuller content like going into buildings going into to bits and bobs there um so really um it makes sense that now if you see it before and you see it after you can compare what kind of playable area we're talking about here and uh, now that DD6, uh, 7, 8, and 9 have been confirmed, as you can actually see from the past previously what it looked like before they made patches to it. So imagine that big chunk as the way it is, right? We can clearly see that's what they've moved into. So from that same assumption, we can go ahead and look at the rest of the map and the different areas in the map to say what else has that same sort of layout what else shows the same kind of remnants of what it could or could not be right and that's really interesting because what we've kind of talked about before was obviously what the possibility of it could be and tepid or tepid uh what we got is obviously uh done it's done and dusted because it's quite flat it doesn't have a lot of stuff there like it doesn't have a lot of buildings and whatnot but this area does, and obviously the, it fits in with the, the title said it's 100% uh, expansion to the DZ in only three zones, which means the capacity of playable space must be at least 50% more than the current DZ in order for it to be 100% uh, more of an expansion to the area. So you can kind of see, well, if you look at a video of like um, 1.6 now expands, and if you haven't seen it by now, you should look at it, you should know it, um, you should kind of get a feel for where it's going to be, um, so you can get into the game and, and obviously play it. So on that sort of thesis there, we're going to look at that chunk, that's a kind of basis of, if that is the case, and that is a playable area they've wanted to expand into, then what other expandable areas are we going to see? Okay, on the far left, we will cover into the next one actually, as the far left is going to be the new incursion. And this kind of sits just uh, right left of the, the clear sky, so you can kind of see there's, there's an outline built in there. Uh, we'll have a wee closer look at it in a minute, but generally you can just see there that it's, it's just like right next to it, so it's quite close to home, uh, which is quite strange. So. As you can see here, I don't think I could get a very good uh, click of it, and sadly, sorry about that. Um, but what you can see here is there's obviously buildings there. And the best way to tell is if you look at the actual map itself, you'll be able to see the sort of lines on it, which indicate to us that there's obviously building blocks or uh, pre coded sort of like just stuff put in there, right? Uh, like I said, with the glitching videos and stuff like that, it is there. So uh, this bit here is where the new incursion is going to sit. And again, you can see how the buildings are slightly different rendered in generally. But if you look at the actual map itself, the current one we have, is that they are completely, fully rendered up the way. So this suggests like a pre-patch type thing where they've kind of loaded an entire map but they've left some things like a bit of like a, a skeleton sort of type thing just so that we can come along later and take that bit and, and flesh it out a bit more. So really this kind of adds into it. Uh, so this is going to be the new incursion. So this is going to be where it sort of sits right next to Clear Sky. Strangely enough, it's really quite close to each other. It's quite strange. But if they're using the outskirts of the map, then it must suggest that they've had more sort of skeleton type um, coding there already so they're just going to be expanding into it so possibly this is going to be used a bit more uh, as we see Clinton sort of that, that whole sort of corner but uh, probably as far up as Clinton and in down to the, the boat they probably wouldn't add into much or they might square it off to include Clinton and make the boat an incursion so it's really kind of up to sort of debate there uh, or it could be a possible raid due to the size of it uh, but we're going to be talking about a raid in a second, um, which is kind of exciting for most people. Uh, Destiny players will love that as well. Um, raid style is, is so much better for sort of gameplay. Okay. So now we're looking at the next part here. Um, this is basically um, next to DZ Nine. I'm sure, okay, uh, top right side of your map. So this, as you can see, has also got the pre-rendering uh, part. So we're kind of going on that same sort of line of if there's a pre-code in there, then obviously they must be wanting to flesh out eventually. Whether it'll be part of the dark zone, 
I'm not entirely sure, but it does look really dense there. So I can imagine that will probably be expansion of the actual map. So this could possibly be a new PVE area uh, or PVE, um, probably PVE more likely. Uh, they'll probably just expand up the way and that's when a new incursion or raid mode will get introduced off that sort of coast uh, if, if hopefully it would be again this is all theory working so don't don't shoot the messenger we're just we're spitballing here okay but mainly i would want to see that as a pv area okay <clears throat> next one here now, this is a very interesting one this this one's quite fascinating because um we talk more about the north end of the map but we don't really see anything happening in the bottom end, like um, apart from the bottom right hand corner uh, where Falcon Lost is, there is really no stuff there. But you'll notice here, um, it's a bit strange, I'll, like a, a, it's like a sort of like, there's an underground bit here, you can go under for high value targets, blah blah blah, but generally speaking, there is no expansion as per se on this bottom left hand corner so the hub essentially is completely random um, what I would like to see here is another incursion but um, having it by access by boat which is fascinating uh, because you can see the dock there it would be kind of cool which is face it it would be kind of cool I'd, obviously uh, we'll talk more on boats it's kind of on the theme here um, but if this was a new incursion our new area map it would be quite small uh, it wouldn't be that dense so it does look like more like it's going to be an incursion at some point uh, purely because you can see the sort of top left corner there is like a, a two sort of like turret type things um, and a sort of high rise building so it does look kind of like a standalone section like a skeleton there uh, again we've talked about and hopefully that will be another kind of incursion why i say it could be a bow because it has the dock to the right hand side there uh, would be kind of cool to kind of go from the hub using utilizing the hub again because it doesn't get used uh, no one really cares about it as soon as you drop into level one or level five you're just like oh beating brooklyn see you later manhattan uh, and you literally never look at the hub ever again so to utilize a hub, it would be kind of good to have a raid where you had to sort of take a boat into it. Uh, obviously not riding the boat, like the train and underground, but you know, the, the same kind of thesis, it's kind of, kind of cool. We do have a lot of, kind of motor transport, train um, and a helicopter, but never like boat. So that would be kind of a nice, uh, a nice introduction there. So while we're saying that, this is the bit I want. This, like, this, this, like, this is like not even like a theory sort of build, this is like this is what I want to happen is that this is an LMB boat, right? It's been taken over by schmucks or someone. Someone's taken over it. When you killed Colonel Bliss, because it is right behind Colonel Bliss, so it's an extension of the story, right? So this is a kind of extension of the story is that once you kill Colonel Bliss, the, the, the last man battalion kind of like went off in known different directions there was the occasional asshole that came along to to try and do something and f up your day right but this is behind the bliss's uh general assembly so it's not a far-fetched if they had the un building they may have a carrier there another carrier that was obviously under their control when they disbanded they either jumped ship or it was taken over by someone else okay so it's not a far-fetched type thing to say this could be something else, right? It is on the west end side of the map, uh, the west end side of the map, really far east. Uh, if you want to have a look at it, it is rendered, so it is possibly there. I've never actually been able to find a good viewpoint of it, but I probably will find one. Uh, it's a tanker, essentially, from what I know of, uh, but a tanker can still be used for military purposes, especially like helicopters and stuff like that. Okay, so that's kind of the cool the kind of main parts of the map that actually had reference to me uh, of like what I thought would be expandable areas um it would be nice to have this as a pv pvp area uh also it'd be great for that uh, i would kind of love an expansion of pvp where you're on a boat taking it from call of duty 4 but you know that could be quite amusing because tankers obviously you get crates you can hide behind them blah blah uh, and just take like kind of you can put it in the hardcore domination on it as well as, well as that uh, so it's kind of more purpose boat uh, and it's completely separate from the map so it doesn't upset anyone Okay, so uh, that's one of the things we're looking at, okay? Now, lastly, let's talk about the nitty gritty, okay? Uh, I have talked about this before, if anyone has seen me on Reddit, um, I recently put up a post of uh, why it's like completely useless to have a PVE DZ, 
Okay, I know this lot of causes a lot of problems with a lot of players. Uh, I can completely understand. Obviously, there you, you want to enjoy that atmosphere, right? Uh, but let's just face it: the problem with the DZ currently is the way it's built. The, the mechanics for it, the, the cheese that comes along with it, and we're experiencing a lot of nerfs, okay? So to make a PvE DZ viable, um, you would have to have a lot of servers, you would have to have, um, like, better sort of, like, mechanics for different sort of, like, game modes. Um, and as if you notice this, uh, I have bitched about this before, is that PvE survival is getting a lot of heat like you, you guys are raging at it because it is, it is such a an awkward thing to have because even though you're in there with your guys and it's pve you can't kill other players you can do things to other players to annoy them uh, i've i've got a video on my own channel that says how to kill a noob on pve it clearly shows me killing someone on pve mode right so it's doable but that's not the extent that people are moaning about. What people are moaning about is people who are uh, stealing their their caches and stuff, uh, and like essentially like robbing it at last minute. Uh, and a lot of people get really upset about that. And that's that's okay. You, I mean, that's that's part of the game mode. It's part of the risk. Um, it's part of the the way they they do things. So there's no point in complaining about it because um, if there was a PVE DZ, there would be problems. What I'd rather talk about is trying to take away the heat from the DZ, right? And I've always said this before, was that the DZ is essentially where the end game content has been stuck in. It's been stuck in a sort of loop there for a long time, as that they, the, since they introduced the new game gear sets, there has been more people playing the LZ than ever, okay? So we can want to talk about if the map does expand what the expansion should entail. Uh, number one thing should be density. Um, as I covered in a post before, is that the uh, the map currently in the LZ is 70% of the map. Okay, so the the DZ only really covers 30% uh, of the entire map, right? So well, that will change. Uh, obviously, we we're talking about how that could change with the math of 100% expansion of DZ. Uh, really, it would only it say it'd take down the, the the LZ to 65%, and uh, the DZ is like 35 now. So really, you're still talking about a lot of space. Um, because of the way the, the the expansion worked before was it was gonna be a bit like a destiny. It was gonna have like instances. So with the open world, the density is a bit a bit different. Um, so trying to get the whole max of what you can get possibly from the game mode is harder. Uh, obviously with its PvE and the new areas are going to be available, uh, they would have to obviously up the density, which is the main point for me. Uh, more mobs, more more events in that sort of area. Um, I'm not a big fan of events, I would probably prefer um, something like interesting, like um, each area of the map has a boss that's trying to take over that map slowly but surely and sends out his minions and if you don't upset his stream uh, or over a six hour period he will eventually take over that map and it will block you from doing certain things in it. Um, you could link that into maybe doing it with uh, link it into sort of like um, using skills. Uh, there could be like comms really. You could take down your um, ability to use a certain skill. So there's like hundreds of expansions of how you could do that. Okay. Uh, obviously making farming easier. Uh, having done the uh, name bosses, I've done a few farmings now, so I don't actually know what they, they actually are. And honestly, um, apart from Apart from one, they are actually really easy. Um, they don't have designated sort of landmarks. I know a lot of people want to kind of go into that, but we're trying to stay away from that. What we want to do is we want to create an area that's a playable space for people to go explore and bring them back into the LZ. Um, that's a sort of main point we want to do. Obviously, PvP, we talked about there, like the boat, that'd be a great PvP area without any PvE. Um, like I don't upset, don't start me on that. So um, what we want to look at is, is the kind of farming, make it more accessible, make it more um, forthcoming and easier for players to get into. Otherwise, we're just going to repeat a whole year one. 
and that's something we have to look at. Uh, it's something we have to. The density of mobs has to be increased. The excitement levels have to be increased. You have to obviously want to make the the DZ less relevant in the future. Um, I think that's the whole problem. I saw like, like last stand's gonna fix a little bit of that. Uh, I can imagine obviously taking the heat off it, taking the sort of back the strain off it because it'll be more PvP focused and it'll be more sort of like directed towards that. So in a way, it's kind of gonna do that. But uh, I want to see more where the LG actually comes to life and a sort of real time essence of making sure that people actually feel engaged by it. Uh, I know that adding sort of events to the DZ takes that strain off it again, but at the same time it, it still localises the event to a certain game mode, uh, which I don't agree with, so there has to be more um, sort of events there for, for players to get their teeth into, and that's something we do really need to do. Um, so obviously I've done the kind of math there, and uh, I think the, what I said was there's like seventy percent LZ as as uh, the map size. I think only like forty percent of it's full, whereas the DZ is more like I think it's something insane, like eighty percent. So for thirty percent of the map, it has a massive percentage of mobs per block essentially, um, whereas the LZ, you think I think it's like every third block there's a a mob somewhere. So you can really com you can really see the comparison, but what we what we kind of want to look at is maybe expanding it without pushing the servers too much, because if you push the servers too much, it's really going to cause a lot of problems for a lot more players, uh, more than what we already have, because to face it, their servers aren't exactly the, the best in the world. So further on from that one, what else we want to look at is uh, the skills. Skills need a change. Um, the the idea change in a sort of way, but we need to expand them. Um, I noticed that a lot of time that players are using the same skills over and over again, and it's it's getting to a point where it's really annoying. Um, it's really really annoying to, to do that. Um, and the same skills are all used over and over again. Okay, so what what we need to look at more is uh, increasing the sort of skill relevance, right? Um, obviously, 1.6 there is a sort of damage type thing going on there, where they're gonna like damage resilience is getting capped at 60%, which should have been done in the first place since day one. Uh, but don't get me started on that. Um, and obviously, um, there could be some more changes to make these these skills more relevant. Uh, I would like to see skills like the my favourite one here suggestion is the um, mobile cover shield, right? So what basically that entails is that the the the, the person with the shield has a wee circle around them and all their cover around about the circle is essentially buffed so it makes your builds more relevant okay things like that we want to give uh, more relevance to skills that aren't used but not without actually making them that op like maybe 10 percent add or something like that 10 percent damage resistance or or what not to cover um so not making it pure totally op as hell okay uh at the same time we can expand on um the way the skills are used, maybe, uh, maybe add in a bit more of sort of a variety of ways you can use them. Um, so it's it's interesting that way to see if we could possibly change it to make it more and more exciting for players to use different skills uh, and bring out more niche builds uh, here in the future. Okay. So one of the last things I want to see um, in year two is quality of life changes. Right, I have asked for this a few times, um, and it makes a bit more relevance now. Is that uh, obviously as the the goalpost changes around these these new games and how we approach the way we build things, uh, I have asked a few times for this, and it's just quality of life changes that I think need to go in place. One of the main ones is obviously having some sort of billboard behind the recalibration station. So behind the recalibration station uh, would be a uh, um, a billboard that would tell you all your your minute max is essentially all your uh, different what is the cap for this what is the cap for that um, and we'd get it'd be just a big quality of life thing would be good in there uh, to make life easier for you um, as a lazy gamer myself I, I know a lot of stuff but at the same time i want to be lazy i don't want to be uh, pure hardcore all the time and having to like write down these things next to me um there should be something like that obviously we have talked about loadouts uh i am 
I'm not really sure, like loadout wise, how we could and like make that a thing, uh, because obviously, like with co games like Call of Duty, we have loadouts purely because in Call of Duty we unlock something, it's constantly there. So the problem relies on if you use a mod for one loadout, does it then have a different loadout? Can it be put into different loadout? What if you upgrade that mod? Well, you have to upgrade it for all of them. Um, so will it make mods irrelevant? Um, will you have to craft 15? Uh, and obviously have like what five for stamina, five for firearms, that kind of thing. So it makes it makes it difficult. Uh, but quality of life change that probably about a big thing there for a lot of players. And then obviously obviously better servers as well. Okay, so um, if you like the video, um, like me, a, give me a like, uh, subscribe if you want to see more things. Uh, leave a comment for Ed and you're interested in. Uh, we'll be making comments later on with uh, different videos, but obviously I've had a cold, so I haven't had much time to do it. But uh, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, have a good day.